Now let us quickly uh, run one example problem. And here uh, we are going to account for slenderness surface. Okay. So you see here, we need to design the longitudinal reinforcement for a braced column which is 500 mm by 500 mm, which is having an axial compression of 1500 kN and bending moments of 100 kN meter and 50 kN meter about x and y axis at the top end. Same what we are saying is this column is going to bend in double curvature like this. Okay, And you see this is the bending moment that we are having m2 and m1. Okay. Now you have bending moment about both axes. This is a slender column that is subjected to biaxial bending moment also, right? And and with the bottom moments, they are saying that you can take about both axes 50 percentage of top. So at bottom, how much it is going to be? Mux is going to be 50 kilonewton meter, and Mey is going to be 25 kilonewton meter. Okay. And here you see it's a slender column, unsupported length of 9 meters, and effective length factor of 0.83. That means it's a, a pinned pinned column. And it is a braced column. Okay, there is no p delta effect. Okay, uh, in the sense lateral drift effect, right? So we are going to use m30 concrete and f you find out. So let's run through the numbers and see what kind of reinforcement we get. Okay, so these are the things that we get. Dx and dy are 500. These are basically square columns. Column generally we try to keep a square column, but uh, uh, you can have rectangular column also depending upon what is the moment of inertia and a rigidity that you are uh, trying to achieve in particular direction of a moment resting frame. Right. So, PU is 1500, MEX is 500, MEY is 50 at top. Similarly, it is 50 and 25 at bottom. L is equal to 9000 uh, millimeter. And reduction factor, the slenderness factors are, uh, K factors are 0.85. Now, let us calculate slenderness ratios. LEX and LEY is 0.85 multiplied by 9000. It works out to be 7650 millimeter. When you divide by your uh, depth, you get 15.3, which is greater than 12. So uh, definitely it is not a short column, but it is not a very slender column also because your slenderness ratio has exceeded, but it's not too high, right? So let us see now how do we do. So again, we have to check for minimum eccentricities and you know the formula for minimum eccentricities, L by 500 by plus Px by 30, you get 34.67, which has to be greater than 21. Again, about the other axis also same because we are dealing with uh, square column with same effective lens, right? Now, let's see primary bending moment because the column is braced and it is bending in double curvature. Both the axes primary bending moment is 0.6 times m2 minus 0.4 to sin. Now, why is it minus sin coming? For column that is bent in double curvature, signs for m2 and m1 will be different, okay? Different signs. That is why we are having M1 is negative. So M2 is positive 0 0.600 minus 0 0.4 M50. So you get 40 and that has to be greater than 0 0.4 times M2, which is 40. So we can take 40. Similarly, primary bending moment about Y axis is 0 0.6 times 50 minus 0 0.4 times 20. So that you get 22, which is again has to be greater than 0.4 times 50, which is 20. So we take 40 and 22 as your primary bending. Now let us calculate the primary eccentricities. Primary eccentricities are nothing but primary moment divided by the load. Okay. So EY will be MPX by PU, which is this. Similarly, EX will be MPX divided by PU, which is this. So uh, both of them are less than the minimum eccentricities that we need to consider. So whatever the primary bending moment that are given is lesser than what I should minimum consider. So that is the reason the code we are going to take uh, bending moment corresponding to this eccentricity. So I multiply by that and then you get 52 instead of uh, now 40 I need to take 52. On the other side I don't need to really amplify because the code is set for biaxial case if you consider minimum eccentricity about one axis it is sufficient. Okay, so we take uh, 22 what our primary minimum as it is, right? So let's go ahead and calculate now additional bending moments. Simplified formula we have discussed that EAX is nothing but DX times LE by D whole squared divided by 2000. So you get 58.25. You see the additional eccentricity is much larger than your applied eccentricity. That is the uh, premises with which we calculated your curvature also for balance condition. So which is uh, proving that here. 
uh, which is high 58.25 mm about both axes. Now in this case, I am going to initially assume a reduction factor or modification factor as 0.5 which we need to verify because I do not know uh, for the reinforcement what would be my balanced uh, capacities. right? So I do not know because I have not still uh, designed what is the reinforcement. That is what I am trying to do. So to do that, first I have to assume this reduction factor as k and you calculate your additional moments which is 43 and 43 about both the axes. Then we have to verify whether this point is actually we are getting closer to that or not. That we will do that later. So you get your additional bending moment like this. So total factored moments will be primary bending moment plus additional bending moment. When you add them up, you get about 95.68 about x axis and about y axis you get 65.68. Right. So uh, for both of them, then we take MUX design. Okay. So the, again, this cannot be less than M2. So that is the reason we are taking MU. A design about uh, moment about x axis is minimum of uh, m2 which is 100 and about x axis it is 65.66 so these are the final moments for which we need design right so if you do that so trial section uh, again same process what we followed for y axial bend i convert them into an uniaxial bending moment and i increase it by about 15 percent so i get a uniaxial bending moment of 138 kN meter for an axial compression of uh, uh, 1500 kN. So again, we are going to use SP16. So now I know my axial demand and bending demand. So small PU, which is PU by FCK BD, works out to be 0.2, and MU by FCK BD square, which is 0.03. So okay, this is your small PU and this is your small MU. So these are the values that you will use to use the chart. Okay, that's why we are doing this. And then if I am assuming uh, uh, for both of these values, you can go back and let's if I assume 16 mm bars and 10 mm dia and 40 mm cover, and then we find that you get about 0.116, right? And uh, we are we are having a biaxial bending, so I have to use um, symmetrical cross section with equal reinforcement. So let's say that uh, with this D prime by D, I use chart 46. So we uh, from uh, then you get your P by F C K as let's say this is the value that you're getting by using the chart and then reinforcement required works out to be 0.8 that 0.8 i slightly i uh, i am increasing it to one to be slightly be conservative because we are dealing with standard column and biaxial loading though i need to put only row required is 0.8 percentage i am putting one percent okay so 2500 mm and uh, for that it works out to be uh, 820 mm bar works out to be 2512 mm square which is higher than what is required so anyway the row, row provided is about one percentage then p by fck to be used in the chart works out to be 0 0.033 not why is that now you're doing p by fck now for the provided reinforcement i need to go back and calculate what is the uniaxial bending moment capacities for that I have PU by FCK BD and the amount of reinforcement which is P small p by FCK. Using these two values, I am going to calculate what is MU by FCK BD square. So from there, I can get uniaxial bending moment capacity. So that's what we do. So let us see. We use this chart uh, for D prime by D equal to 0.15, for example, and uh, your PU by FCK BD is 0.2 and then MU by FCK bit is 0.037 so you get uh, this as your minimum reinforcement so you get minimum reinforcement of 0.02 okay so that is the reason we end up with this as 0.0 okay so that is that is that's how we end up with 0.8 which is your minimum reinforcement ratio but then generally i have i've explained in the previous slides also the column at least you put one percentage of uh, longitudinal bar Though the code is saying 0.8 is sufficient, it's a good practice to put about one percentage. So that is the reason. So because in this column, the bending, though we have slanted as the, the applied bending moment, uh, the primary bending moment, as well as additional bending moment, when you add also, your demands are less. Okay, that is the reason you end up providing only one percentage of steel. Now let us check for uh, calculate MUX1 and MUX2. And uh, so PU by FCK bid is 0.2, row provided is this, and D prime is this. So uh, we get these values and use uh, chart of D prime uh, by D equal to 
uh, 0.15 that will be conservatively you will be estimating if you want to be more close so you have to interpolate between chart 48 and 49 because this is 0.116 it is between 0.1 and 0.15 so uh, you get uh, after interpolation you find your uniaxial bending moment capacity is 289 kilonewton meter which is much higher than your prime uh, the design bending moment of uh, 168 okay which is significantly greater than your design moments of 166 which is how it should be otherwise you will not satisfy that uh, load contour equation which was developed by Bresson. let us see now uh, these are trial sections so, so we checked additional moments again uh, so now what is it with? we have done this section we have to go back and check whether this kx and ky both of them we assumed it to be 0.5 right so that 0.5 whether it is correct or not we have to check for that what is that i need to know i need to calculate this balanced moment capacities pubx and puby because this is the square column both of them will be same okay so uh, that is what we are doing chart 48 and chart 49 again we go and estimate this balance capacities okay and uh, yeah, balance capacity how do you calculate when the stress in the steel is 0.87 fi which is marked on the interaction curve so if you go to that uh, chart you will have stress levels also indicated okay which we will sh show it in the next slide so using that i can calculate what is the uh, uh, pubx okay so that works out to be 975 kilonewton for this column okay now uh, for again for this also puby is working out to be 863 kilonewton right because now why these you are getting though it's a square column why are you getting different values of balanced axial compression capacities because corresponding bending moment is different right for which we have defined designed so that is the reason we get now you go ahead and check your pure axial compression capacity like what we have done p wz is 0.545 ckg plus 0.75 minus 0.45 fck times s yes. so this is the steel that we have put and this is the area of your uh, total section and uh, grade of concrete is 30 so you get your pure axial compression capacity is 4296 and your modification factors works out to be 0.835 okay so the assumed value of reduction factor of 0.85 is not uh, correct okay and uh, which is basically uh, it, it tells that it is higher than your so you can in fact use 0.835 but you have used only 0.5 but still your design will be conservative you can but you, if you want to optimize the design you can you have to go ahead and redo that the revised design moments now will be instead of 0.5 that what we have considered now you have to use 0.835 then it will become 125 and 95 so, so this reduction factors are we have taken uh, less conservative so this is higher value so that is the reason your demands are slightly getting higher so again you know if you go back to the chart and you get your uh, biaxial bending capacities as this 287 which is significantly higher than uh, 125 and 95 then you get your ratio of PU by PUZ, which is 1500 divided with pure compression capacity is 0.35, which lies between 0.2 and 0.8. Then we go back and calculate our alpha n because you remember we have taken this equation, right? So alpha n here we put PU by PUZ, okay? Up to 0.2, it is 1, and then it becomes linear and then it becomes constant. So what is this value? It is 0.8. Okay. So between this and this, we need to do interpolation. So this is two, and this is one point zero, right? So we, in our case, this is 0 0.349. So for that, alpha n is 1.25. And once we got all the capacities, we go back and check uh, whether it is within this load contour equation or not, and you find that this is 0 0.65, which is less than one inch. It is very very sick. In fact, this design is not a very optimal or economical design because you are very, very conservative design. So if you if you really want, we can go back and reduce the steel, longitudinal steel, maybe one diameter less if you do it, then you will find that uh, it may become very economical design, right? So 
yeah so this is the uh, detail so uh, so whatever that we have done if you see uh, right so this particular reinforcement detail is is what we are, it is adequate for the demand that what we are getting so again we are putting 16 numbers of 16 mm bars okay which is uh, good uh, and uh, nice distribution of longitudinal bar and your also ties are all nicely kept so uh, this is design is very conservative design and you are also satisfying the biaxial bending capacities as ratios as 0.65 which is well within that curve though it is a slender column so it is very very safe all right so uh, let's summarize this uh, module uh, we have discussed the behavior of slender column right and what is important slender column moderately slender column design is allowed by the code for designing a moderately slender column i have to account for that additional bending right and uh, we have seen that uh, two effects okay the effect of bracing when you have an unbraced case effective length will increase and when you have an unbraced case again your columns will move relative to each other so because of that at the end itself you will have a lateral drift effect but when your column is braced then you will have only member stability effect. for a unbraced column you will have both member stability effect and lateral drift effect and we discussed the code procedure for the design of slender column and we also took one example for a slender column with biaxial bending and we uh, calculated the reinforcement required right so these are some of the references that we have used in preparing this module and again i would uh, like to thank my student uh, muthuraja for the phd student for helping me with the slide preparation so with this we are completing the chapter on uh, columns uh, and we will talk about serviceability and other aspects in the next part of the module thank you